getting closer to Earth. Again, they went all the way out to orbit uh, at about 575 kilometers from Earth. I think the furthest they went was 590 kilometers. Um, but now they're on their way back home, so they're approximately 200 kilometers at this moment. Um, and again, today uh, we are bringing the crew back home. Um, we've begun uh, several uh, uh, operations during this deorbit sequence, uh, but actually deorbit and return home began yesterday. We did have a couple phase burns yesterday that brought the, the vehicle down to approximately 365 kilometers. Um, and now we're getting closer and closer to bring, bringing the crew back home. It's getting really exciting over here. Um, can't wait to see, uh, see them back on Earth after their trip to orbit. Yeah, so uh, Jesse mentioned yesterday we started some uh, downhill phasing burns. There were two of them to lower the altitude. Uh, earlier today, we saw, uh, we didn't see, but we got confirmation of the drunk jettison, uh, the trunk jettison. We completed our deorbit burn successfully, and right now, uh, Dragon is um, uh, going through its uh, re entry phase and through its um, blackout uh, communications portion. And shortly here, we're going to have splashdown um, after our parachutes deploy. And, you know, I can't believe this mission is, um, has, has come and gone so quickly. Uh, the crew has been, again, super busy. And I do want to remind um, all of our viewers that uh, this inspiration for mission, this inspiration for crew, it's, it's all for a great cause. We want to make sure that we further human space exploration. We want to do a ton of science. And we want to fundraise for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, the goal is $200 million. Uh, Jared Isaacman donated $100 million himself. And we're a little over halfway. Um, through the other $100 million that we want to um, uh, fundraise. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you have a computer nearby, you can go to inspiration4.com slash donate and um, support the cause there. There's also a bunch of different things like auctions. Um, Dragon, SpaceX, please verify crew entry preparations complete with tablets, restraints, visors, and feet. And Captain SpaceX, we were just waiting a little bit longer, but we'll do it right now. SpaceX Dragon, tablets are secure, restraints are tight, and visors are down. We are ready to come home. We copy all. SpaceX Dragon, tablets are secure, restraints are tight, and visors are down. We are ready to come home. We copy all, Dragon. Approximately four minutes, 30 seconds until calm blackout. We'll see you on the other side at 2300. Talk to you at 2300. Just under five minutes away from that blackout period. So uh, what you're seeing on your screen is the core, the, the crew operations and resources engineer communicating with the crew on board Dragon, preparing um, for uh, re-entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so they're closing their visors and making sure that their five-point harnesses are um, uh, uh, secure, um, basically doing all their preparations uh, for that re-entry. And again, if you're just now joining us, you are tuned into the Inspiration4 mission. This is the first all civilian uh, crew uh, out to orbit. And now they've been out there for, for about three days and now making their way back. Um, and the crew on board is Jared Isaacman, who's the commander for the mission. Um, he is the 38-year-old CEO of Ship4 Payments. Um, he has uh, been a fighter pilot for many, many years. He's flown in over 100 air shows um, and always does a, a fundraiser or charity event with every one of his air shows. And he's doing the same thing with this mission, which is pretty, pretty incredible. 
up, up next we have uh, Haley Arsenault. She's 29 years old, and she is actually the youngest American to fly in space ever. Right, she's also the first. Away from his Steelers bias attitude. Continuing to get great calls. Um, Haley is also the first in space with a prosthetic. Um, she is uh, a pediatric cancer survivor and also um, a physician assistant at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the same place that saved her life when she was 10 years old. We've got Dr. Cyan Proctor on board, making her way back home with the crew. She is the 51-year-old mission pilot uh, for this mission. Um, she's from Tempe, Arizona, and she holds the seat of prosperity. Uh, she actually was awarded this two seat minutes for. To um, we got a two-minute call out for that expected uh, blackout period. Uh, but Dr. Sayan Proctor actually was awarded the seat for starting her own, basically, business uh, for her artwork and her poetry. But she's also an incredible um, human being. She's an analog astronaut. She's always wanted to go to space. Um, almost became a NASA astronaut at Slow one point. To initial entry attitude complete. And now uh, she's on the crew and was able to accomplish her dream. <laughs> And uh, last but certainly not least is Chris Zembrowski. He's 42, he's a data engineer um, at Lockheed Martin and a United States Air Force veteran, uh, a um, space enthusiast through and through. And, uh, you know, I was watching the docuseries and um, he's just a, uh, a, fa uh, a husband and father first and foremost. And so um, those were our four crew members that are currently making their way back home, <laughs> uh, back down to earth and um, as part of the Inspiration4 mission. I'm so excited to see uh, see them come back home, and I can't wait to hear their stories from being out in space. Again, just the first all civilian crew, you know, they're not professional astronauts. Um, I, I can't wait to hear their stories uh, coming back from that. Yeah, it looks like they've had a really fun time. Um, I, I was watching the um, interview uh, with the St. Jude, uh, St. Jude children uh, yesterday, and uh, they were throwing M&M's all over the capsule. Acceleration. And with the microgravity, just darting them down and trying <laughs> to chase them down. So uh, they're, they're obviously very, very good friends and, um, uh, you know, work very, very well together. And we are entering this blackout here. kilometer altitude. We are entering this blackout period that we have mentioned. Again, it, it is an expected period of time where the vehicle is re-entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, it generates a lot of heat, about up to 3,500 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which causes uh, a plasma layer to form around the vehicle. So we do lose comms with the crew. They've already done uh, their pre-blackout period operations, making sure that their visors are closed, they're strapped in, um, and they're ready to re-enter back into their atmosphere. Um, and so we do expect to, to regain comms about seven minutes after they've entered the blackout period. So the view on your left is Mission Control in Hawthorne, SpaceX's headquarters. Uh, you can see that we've got some folks gathering. Uh, they're also very excited <laughs> for Inspiration4 to return back to Earth. Um, and so, yeah, we're all waiting. Uh, we're actually uh, about 20, 25 minutes away from splashdown off the coast of Florida. Again, Dragon, even throughout this blackout period, it can pilot itself essentially. So uh, again, the crew just needs to make sure that um, you know, they're, they're strapped in and enjoy the flight because Dragon will take them to uh, where they need to be. Yeah, exactly. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they don't really have to do anything aside from follow along with each event that is happening. Uh, so we did catch them earlier uh, watching some movies <laughs> on their flight back home. Um, but yeah, they, they're, they, they really don't need to do much as Dragon is autonomous. Yes. So after we splash down, um, for those that are maybe watching for the first time or wondering, um, well, how does Dragon get out of the water? Um, so Dragon itself is uh, designed Someone to be waterproof. Entry. 80 kilometer altitude. Loss of calm. Start of blackout period. So we're we just heard Anticipated the Anticipated acquisition of signal in four minutes and 35 seconds. 
we just heard the call out that Dragon is about 80 kilometers in altitude. We're entering that uh, communications blackout period now, and uh, we just got an update that it's uh, expected to last about four and a half minutes. So again, we'll reestablish communications with the crew uh, after this blackout period, but um, we are um, entering the atmosphere at a very, very, very high velocity. And when we start to um, uh, uh, get a lot of friction from the atmosphere and the space capsule, we start to form that plasma and plasma tends to interfere with communication. So um, it's a temporary communications blackout. And again, we're gonna uh, be, uh, be able to reconnect with them in about four minutes here. And during this time, no, um, no vehicle telemetry is received by Mission Control or the recovery team. There's no external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication. Um, that is not possible at this time. So as a reminder, uh, Dragon is designed to fly itself uh, and continues to fly autonomously using Draco thrusters to orient itself during this re-entry. Now, during this re-entry, uh, the vehicle will be slowing down uh, the orbital velocity from 17,500 miles per hour, uh, and the use of just the atmosphere will bring the vehicle down to about 350 miles per hour before we even deploy the drogue chutes. Yeah, um, a few minutes after we get uh, communications again, we are expecting to deploy um, the sets of parachutes. We have two sets. The first, again, are drogue chutes. They are, there's two of them. Their job is to slow the vehicle down from about 350 miles an hour to about 120 miles an hour. And those deploy um, at around um, 18,000 feet. Shortly after that, we'll deploy our main parachutes. There's four of them. Those are larger um, circular uh, orange and white uh, chutes. And their job is to slow the vehicle down from 120 miles an hour to about 15 miles an hour and then we'll make splash down off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. So yeah, Dragon is again flying itself. Uh, even the shoots that I had just mentioned about um, uh, there's sensors uh, on Dragon that detect altitude and pressure, and they will um, determine when to fire those um, parachutes. And so uh, pretty much everything on Dragon is autonomous, and again, it's steering itself, it's taking the inspiration for a crew uh, where they need to go uh, for their targeted splashdown. Again, if you're just now joining us, we're currently uh, in progress of the blackout period. Um, what this is, is basically the Dragon spacecraft uh, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, it'll see uh, temperatures, external temperatures of about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, building a plasma layer around the vehicle, uh, preventing comms um, and communication with the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, it's expected to last about four and a half minutes. We're a little over halfway through that right now. Um, so we should, uh, in, a, in a couple minutes here, start hearing some comms from the core, uh, checking in to regain that communication with Dragon. there. Yeah, this is amazing. This is the first shot of the Dragon <laughs> capsule coming back uh, as part of the Inspiration4 mission. Uh, the crowd here is super excited <laughs> seeing that for the first time as well. Um, so yeah, a couple minutes left of um, the blackout period and uh, we should be getting comms reestablished with the crew here shortly.
What you're seeing on your screen right now is on the left-hand side. That is Mission Control Hawthorne. Dragon, GPS converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue shoot deploy. Copy that, SpaceX. We show the same. And those comms confirm that we have regained comms with Dragon. Uh, and they're getting ready for Drogue deploy here shortly. Yeah, I love these tracking shots. <laughs> uh, again, that is Dragon in the center of your screen. Uh, we've got visuals of it, and we're expecting um, Drogue shoots deploy to deploy, and then the main shoots shortly after that here in a couple of minutes. for crew's return, uh, waiting on drogue shoot deploy. That happens at about 18,000 feet. Dragon, brace for drogue window. Got that, SpaceX, we're bracing. <laughs> on re-entry, the team's experiencing uh, about three to five Gs. Um, We heard some words to, to have them brace for a drogue deploy. Uh, they will feel uh, the difference in speed when the uh, shoots do deploy. Um, that was what the, co the uh, core mentioned there. That's such a cool shot of Dragon uh, coming back down to Earth. It looks very fast uh, in this camera view here. This is a great shot of Dracking looking off Come at the drug shoots. A lot of communication going back and forth between the crew uh, and ground station, but the drogue's job is to slow the vehicle down from about 350 miles an hour to 120. We are expecting the main shoots for these to cut off and the main shoots to come uh, shortly after this. <laughs> Dragon, these are four happy moons. Dragon, the satellite in order. You have visual from the Covey forces. Covey down, SpaceX, good news. <laughs> And at 4.04 p.m. Pacific time, we do have confirmation that the main shoots have deployed. And you can see that on your left-hand screen of a camera looking forward uh, above the Dragon capsule, looking at those four main shoots. 1,000. Copy, 1,000. <laughs> the next event coming up now is a visual confirmation of splashdown. You can see the Dragon capsule on your right-hand screen uh, slowly coming down now. We've, we've talked about how fast the vehicle uh, has been traveling, um, but they will be touching down approximately 15 miles per hour when they touch the uh, Atlantic Ocean there. 800, SpaceX. <laughs> we copy 800. Now the, the Dragon 1 program had great success with the water landing with 20 successful splashdowns over the course of that program, nine of which were carried out by flight-proven Dragon spacecraft. And this is a great shot. Dragon continuing to descend back towards Earth, again targeting a landing, uh, excuse me, a splashdown off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Copy 600. Four 
400. Copy 400. We're bracing. We can't be 200. Inspiration 4, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home to planet Earth. Your mission has shown the world that space is for all of us and that everyday people can make extraordinary impacts in the world around them. Thank you for sharing your leadership, hope, generosity, and prosperity. And congratulations on your incredible journey. Thanks so much, SpaceX. It was a heck of a ride for us. It's just getting started. Coffee just getting started. So welcome back, <laughs> Inspiration 4, the Dragon Resilience Capsule has returned, the crew has returned. Uh, what a phenomenal, phenomenal visual that we got. Um, and I love that Jared said, we're just getting started. <laughs> right, this is the beginning uh, of their journey, uh, of the next steps to the new era in, in human space flight. Um, and just, you know, what, the, what an incredible mission. What an amazing um, view, watching them touch down and splash down into the Atlantic Ocean. You could hear the crowd here, so excited to welcome the crew back home. Yes. So uh, we do have a couple of events uh, that need to happen first before we can start to uh, uh, get the crew out of the capsule. So you can see some boats headed towards Dragon. Um, and uh, you know the first job is to make sure that the area around Dragon is safe to approach. And then we'll go in there, start uh, rigging the uh, Dragon up to be able to hoist later on onto our main recovery vessel. So uh, we also heard that uh, Jared had uh, given us the confirmation of stable one. What that means is Dragon has um, splashed down and is upright. There's also a stable two. Um, Dragon can actually be um, upside down or sideways. Um, mm -hmm. It is waterproof and has systems where it can pump seawater into some bladders to help keep it upright. So um, again, stable one is the, the best possible scenario that we can achieve. And that's what we see on screen right now. And just something to note, um, there are going to be a few operations that happen um, before the crew can get out of the capsule. So they will be strapped into their seats, remain strapped into their seats um, throughout the, this and these operations until uh, basically until hatch open uh, once we have the Dragon capsule on board the recovery vessel. Uh, so we do have some events uh, coming up next. Uh, the um, fast boats will be approaching the Dragon capsule. Uh, they'll be doing some inspections to make sure that it is safe before we begin operations uh, to lift Dragon out of the water onto the recovery vessel. Dragon, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in one minute. And copy that SpaceX, we're looking forward to seeing it. And Dragon, with that, we request to come aboard via display clam. And Requesting permission to come aboard via display cam. Permission granted, come aboard SpaceX.
And what you're seeing on your screen is uh, the recovery team approaching Dragon. Again, they will be uh, starting to do some inspections. Uh, they'll do some ordinance and hypergol checks just to make sure that the vehicle is safe before they begin rigging Dragon uh, to bring the vehicle onto the recovery vessel. And I think on the left-hand screen, that is uh, someone on a jet ski helping to pull some of those chutes out of the water. Um, they did automatically detach from Dragon once, they, once the vehicle splashed down. Um, so now they are removing them from the water. Yeah, it is super important that we cut those main parachutes. We don't want any type of wind or even the water to uh, pull or drag the, the Dragon capsule. But uh, when we did see Dragon splash down, we also saw really good visuals of the mains being cut as well. Um, there is boat and personnel that are going to go out there and collect um, those chutes as part of the recovery operation. We are expecting about an hour from splashdown until we can get the crew outside of the capsule. Again, we're going through a series of safety checks and some other operations to get uh, Dragon hoisted, rigged up, um, and lifted up onto the main recovery vessel before we can open that side hatch and get the crew out. It was very, very exciting. I think uh, the couple of seconds leading up to Splashdown, you could hear a pin drop here in Hawthorne. <laughs> but as soon as we made contact with the water, excitement erupted and right. it was just uh, amazing. <laughs> Again, this is the Inspiration4 crew, the first all-civilian mission to orbit with four incredible, incredible uh, crew on board and we now have an inside view on Dragon as they are sitting on the ocean water uh, awaiting for the recovery operations. <laughs> Looks like uh, we got a selfie. <laughs> I think Dr. Cyan has taken some post splashdown <laughs> pictures. Uh, well deserved. <laughs> And again, this is standard procedure. We do have um, some crew uh, climbing on board Dragon. They're performing some inspections, uh, just making sure that the vehicle is safe prior to the next step. Dragon SpaceX, Hypergol sweeps and ordnance checks are nominal. Rigging is in progress, approximately two, five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC. Some excitement from the crew on board and if you noticed um the difference in view the camera actually has not moved but the seats um for, from what you've seen previously of this view the uh the astronauts are actually rotated a little bit more forward and that is for these return operations um instead of the reclined back position um so that's why the view looks a little bit different So on the right hand side, um, we do see the, uh, the rigger um, climbing up on the Dragon capsule to attach some hardware um, so that way Dragon can be lifted and hoisted out of the water using our uh, main recovery ship, uh, Ghost Searcher, which will be approaching the vehicle in a few minutes here. Um, so that hardware is important um, and that's how we get Dragon out. We hoist it and we actually put it on um, what's called a nest um, and then we'll perform some more checkouts, make sure everything is good before we open up that side hatch. You can see um, one of the techs climbing on board crew uh, is the crew, the uh, Dragon capsule's exterior. Uh, they do train for this event. Um, they do go through a lot of training to make sure that they are qualified to perform these operations.
Dragon SpaceX, with your public. If you're just now joining us, you are tuned into the Inspiration4 mission. The all civilian crew has now returned back to Earth. Uh, what you're seeing on your right hand screen are recovery operations currently in progress. Uh, the crew has already done their safety check to make sure that the vehicle was okay to approach and now they have begun uh, some rigging operations. They're um, installing some of the rigging hardware that they need to be able to lift the capsule out of the um, out of the water onto the recovery vessel. Um, and on your left hand screen is the live view inside of Dragon of the crew. Um, and it's just been such an incredible mission so far. Like they lifted off on Wednesday, um, expected to be in space for about three days. They were able to perform some science experiments. They were able to do some charity events, talk to, uh, again, this, this mission was all for uh, a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So they got to talk to some St. Jude patients live while in space and doing backflips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and to think that this crew uh, really formed about six months ago, and, and I, we cannot stress that uh, this is the first all civilian crew. Uh, they, their day job is not being an astronaut. They were trained uh, in the same simulations and same manuals that uh, you know um, Dragon, uh, previous Dragon crew members uh, were trained in, and they got together through together this amazing mission. Again, um, you know, providing fundraising capabilities for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, they they gave us a, a live on-orbit event yesterday, um, and uh, you know, they spent a couple of days in space, did some art, did some photography, <laughs> did some somersaults, <laughs> um, and now. Uh, they're back on Earth, and in a few minutes here, they're gonna take a, a fresh breath of fresh air from fresh breath of Earth air uh, <laughs> for the first time in about three days. It's very, very exciting. Yeah, I, I cannot wait uh, to hear the stories that they have to tell us. You know, we did get some of those live events, but uh, they were out there for three days. Um, uh, that's quite a bit of time uh, being out in uh, microgravity um, in a spacecraft. Uh, so I'm really excited to hear what their experiences are really like. Um, you know, with the NASA crew missions, we we typically get to hear you know some of their uh, their thoughts of the Dragon spacecraft. Um, would love to hear uh, more from you know just a, a, a all civilian crew this time around, not professional ast astronauts. And I think it's it's uh, as we see the sun setting on the right hand side, the boats are equipped with um, uh, very strong lights uh, to make sure that they can continue the operation in case the sun does go down. Uh, but one thing I do want to reiterate is weather and how great that's been for us. Uh, we. Um, uh, we had a phenomenal day in terms of weather uh, Wednesday during ascent, and um, on return you can look at the ocean now, and it's it's not choppy. There's no waves essentially. Um, it's basically like pool water, and so the dragon <laughs> capsule is is there. It's it's floating there now uh, because it's not you know choppy. The recovery team can get in there, do their jobs without worrying about any other um, external factors. Yeah, that's extremely important. Safety is number one here at SpaceX, so we always want to make sure um, that we're keeping uh, these events during uh, an environment that is safe, and, and weather plays a very big factor into that. Um, and not just for the crew on board Dragon, but the the um, recovery team there. Uh, which you've been currently seeing climbing on Dragon, you know, installing the rigging. Um, they're on boats, uh, so it, it's really important to make sure that the uh, weather conditions are accommodating to these operations.
Yeah, so we are expecting the team to finish uh, installing all of the equipment needed to lift Dragon out of the water uh, in a few minutes. And um, we should see uh, another boat approach the um, Dragon capsule, and that will be where um, we essentially hook it up to a crane on the back of the boat, lift it up out of the water, and onto the recovery vessel. The Dragon vehicle is looking nice and toasty. I think if we had daytime <laughs> shots, it would look essentially like a marshmallow. Again, uh, <laughs> when it's re-entering the earth, uh, it um, can get quite hot on the exterior. Um, and the Pika material is doing its job and absorbing the brunt of that, um, of that heat. Uh, but uh, there's a side hatch. I mean, that's, that's where the, the crew is going to egress out of. That side hatch was sealed three days ago, and it hasn't been opened since. And so, um, you know, typically, uh, uh, you know, missions uh, with crew go to the International Space Station. The crew will ingress and egress out of that top hatch that you see there. But uh, because we weren't going to the International Space Station for this mission, we installed that super cool cupola and um, that hatch is going to stay closed. But the team will be exiting out of the side hatch uh, in, in a few minutes uh, here. Right now, we're currently uh, performing recovery operations. We have a crew there um, on one of the fast boats uh, installing rigging onto the Dragon capsule. Uh, this will help them lift the Dragon capsule onto the recovery vessel um, into the what we call the nest, the Dragon nest on board. Um, we'll reorient and locate the uh, vehicle um, on the recovery ship uh, in a position where we can open the hatch and then have the crew uh, step out for the first time since uh, Wednesday. Um, and the, when they open the hatch, we will have um, a medical officer check on them first. Uh, it's a pretty standard procedure to make sure, you know, they have been out in space for three days. Um, so we do want to make sure that the crew is okay. There will be a team there helping them um, every bit of the way to make sure that they are okay uh, as they walk to the medical room on the recovery vessel. What you're seeing right now on your screen on the left hand side is a live view inside of Dragon. A uh, view from the behind the displays on your left hand side there that is Commander Jared Isaacman and to his right is Dr. Cyan Proctor who was the pilot for this mission. They're now back down on Earth. What an amazing homecoming day for this crew. Such an exciting mission. So after landing to recap the events, it took about 10 minutes for the recovery crew to complete their safety checks. And then once they completed that, the team uh, began to prepare Dragon to be lifted onto the recovery vessel. As part of the preparation for this lift, one member of the recovery team that we saw on screen climbed on top of the capsule so that way they can attach Dragon's hoist rings and connect the lifting lines. Uh, again, we are estimating about an hour after splashdown until we are able to raise Dragon up and out of the water onto the recovery boat and remove the crew from the spacecraft. And then, Jesse you just mentioned, after medical checkouts, the crew will return to the Cape um, by helicopter and re be rejoined by their friends and family.
if you're just if you're just now joining us, you are watching the Inspiration4 mission. Uh, the Inspiration4 crew, first all civilian crew to orbit, is now back down on Earth um, and currently in progress of the recovery operations. They're currently out uh, in the Atlantic Ocean uh, as the team is rigging up the capsule uh, to get it ready to be lifted onto the recovery vessel. And what you're seeing on your left-hand screen is a live view of the crew inside of the vehicle at the moment. Yeah, we splashed down just a few minutes after 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we also had great visuals of the Dragon spacecraft returning back to Earth. We saw uh, some really great shots uh, from the Dragon vehicle looking upwards to the drogue chutes and the main parachutes. Um, and then we you know, had a nice soft water landing in the Atlantic Ocean. And again, we're waiting for the rigging equipment to be installed. That way we can get the vehicle out of the water and then the crew um, out of the uh, Dragon Resilience Good. capsule. Rigging is complete. Approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Jane, copy that, five minutes, and we are practicing in-flight entertainment. We copy in-flight entertainment. The crew is having a great time with in-flight entertainment. Um, uh. So yeah, it looks like they're all in great spirits. Uh, we have a really cool shot on the right-hand side of the screen. That is the back of Go Searcher, um, the main recovery vessel. Uh, Dragon is in the background, as well as some other supporting recovery vessel ships as well. <laughs> yeah, this is... Again, pretty incredible um, to, to see where we are today with this mission, first all civilian crew. And uh, ironically, it's so much like they just went and, and flew on an airplane as they're <laughs> watching movies, waiting to, uh, you know, deboard the, yes. the, the spacecraft. <laughs> And again, this mission is a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We've got some great news that we've raised up to $157 million so far. Um, how incredible to do such a, a inspiring mission like this, as well as raise $157 million for such an amazing cause. Yeah, so it, in the last 90 minutes, essentially, we raised $4 million. Uh, keep it up, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, again, it, it's going to a great cause, and, and it's benefiting a lot of, lot of wonderful people. Again, currently in progress are recovery operations. So far, they've already uh, inspected the capsule um, for safety before uh, installing some rigging hardware. Uh, we got some comms that they will be ready for uh, that. That rigging is a uh, rigging setup is complete, and they will be lifting the vehicle in a few minutes. Here, again, this is Ghost Searcher, and what you're seeing on your right-hand screen um at the end of ghost searcher is the dragon nest <laughs> it's basically the uh nest or stand that uh dragon will be lifted onto and set into we also heard some comms that uh the crew is in good spirits watching some entertainment uh, while they wait <laughs> to um, while they wait to be lifted onto Ghost Searcher and for hatch opening so that they can egress the vehicle. Yeah, they've been busy doing a lot of work for um, a lot of great causes. So now that they're back on land, we want to give them a very smooth experience. They can just sit back, <laughs> relax. We'll take care of everything else. 
we can see that the gap between the Go Searcher boat and Dragon is starting to close. Um, we are expecting uh, uh, to hoist Dragon out of the water and again, uh, put it on that nest that you see on the bottom uh, middle of your screen in, in a few minutes here. And weather has been just great for us today, actually through this whole mission. Um, this is such a unique mission where we did have to ensure that weather upon liftoff as well as return would be well. Um, and not just the weather in the atmosphere, but the, the water where we are landing. And you can see on your screen that it's very calm. This makes it really uh, a lot easier for the crew to perform the recovery operations. Um, just great, great weather all around for this mission. So we just saw the crew tossing a line um, to the other uh, member of the recovery uh, crew on the Dragon capsule uh, itself. And so this last bit of distance, we want to make sure that it is nice and controlled uh, for the Dragon vehicle to come on in and um, uh, make its way up the, um, uh, the recovery vessel. For safety purposes, the crew does remain strapped into their seats throughout this, this entire process uh, as they uh, are going to be lifted onto the boat. And again, they will have um, the first person to check on them when the hatch opens will be a medical officer to ensure that they uh, are safe and healthy um, before they start egressing the vehicle. Uh, and that'll be when they will be uh, allowed to get out of their seats. We've got a crew member on the Dragon capsule at the moment. Um, and again, they are helping with the rigging and hoisting process to lift that Dragon capsule onto the recovery vessel. Uh, and again, they have done several hours of training um, for this particular role. Um, so they are professionals. Dragon, brace for capsule lift. You heard some comms. Uh, they are getting ready to lift the Dragon capsule. You saw the last recovery uh, crew member hop off of the Dragon capsule into the water and onto the fast boat there as they clear the way for lifting the Dragon capsule. Here comes Dragon out of the water. Incredible. Dragon is being lifted 
onto the recovery of vessel into the dragon nest. That is what you see them setting the vehicle down on right there. You can see at the very bottom of Dragon some water coming out. Again, that's the ballast system that help, helps keep Dragon upright in the seawater or in the ocean. Um, so it's functioning as designed. Uh, and Dragon is now on the recovery vessel. <laughs> Dragon's almost a little bit of a mix of a rocket, spacecraft, uh, and a little bit of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it does everything you need it to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dragon, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks. Stand by for translation to egress platform in approximately one minute. I see some fist pumps from Dr. Cyan <laughs> <laughs> as aboard the, um, uh, the Dragon capsule right now. Uh, next event coming up after the, the team does some safety checks uh, is opening the side hatch. Um, that's going to be very, very exciting. We're going to see the crew for the first time, and they're going to see Earth for the first time in, <laughs> uh, since three days ago. Well, they've seen Earth. They've seen Earth. Uh, but uh, from space. Yes. They'll see Earth from Earth now. <laughs> They'll become Earthlings again. <laughs> What you heard was some comms, just letting the crew know that they will be translating the um, dragon on the nest um, and reorienting it into a position on Ghost Searcher uh, so that it is in a good, stable position for them to uh, open the hatch. Uh, so while Dragon's top hatch uh, houses the cupola, the astronauts will egress from Dragon's side hatch. That's what you see uh, in the center of your screen, um, pending capsule orientation from the water. Uh, so before opening the hatch, the spacecraft uh, has to uh, equalize the cabin pressure with the outside environment. Once the hatch is open, that will be Jared, Haley, Cyan, and Chris's first breath of fresh Earth air since boarding Falcon 9 at the start of their mission uh, on September 15th. <laughs> If you're just now joining us, you are watching the Inspiration4 mission. The Inspiration4 crew is back home on Earth. We have a uh, lifted Dragon with the crew onto the recovery vessel. And currently in a, in a minute or so, they should be um, translating the vehicle uh, into a position where they can uh, open the side hatch and then perform the next steps for egressing, which will include a medical officer checking on them uh, prior to that egress. Yeah, and on the right-hand side of your screen, that's a live shot inside the capsule. Dragon, translation imminent. it is they are translating the vehicle uh, to just under the uh, helicopter pad on the vessel looks like they're starting to wash it down <laughs> get it clean prepared for that hatch opening yeah this is essentially an egress or a platform for the um, crew members to exit um, Dragon is quite large and the side hatch is um, quite a bit a ways um, up and so we don't we want to make sure that uh, when we open the side hatch they can just um, comfortably get out. And what they have there is uh, a ladder as they prep for hatch opening. There's uh, a few things that they do have to do here for preparation before they open up that side hatch.
Yeah, things are moving quite quickly. Uh, we splashed down about 40 minutes ago, and now Dragon is on the main recovery vessel uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. That is, a, again, a live view inside of the capsule. Uh, you can't see their faces, but on the left-hand side of that shot, that's Jared Isaacman, the mission commander. To his right is Dr. Cyan Proctor, the um, uh, mission pilot. Uh, to Dr. Cyan's right is Chris Sembrowski, the mission, mission specialist, and to um, Jared Isaacman's left is uh, Haley Arsenault, the uh, medical officer of the mission. And I'm sure they're all excited to come back to Earth um, and uh, probably still enjoying some in-flight entertainment, as Jared, Jared called it. Yeah, what a crew for this mission. Just such incredible individuals um, raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, doing science, science experiments while out in orbit, um, let alone just being the first all civilian crew to go to orbit. Um, it, it's just been so inspirational and I can't wait to see them egress the, the vehicle uh, shortly here. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be a very, very exciting time um, yeah, all the science that they've done, all of that data is, is going to be available essentially to the public. Um, and so, uh, you know, um, all of the experiments that they've done, uh, is, is definitely going to benefit a larger populace than, uh, just this specific mission. Right. And so far this mission has raised up to $157 million for St. Jude's St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which is incredible. That's going to save a lot of children's lives. Um, just, just an incredible mission uh, from start to finish here. Dragon, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. This will be our last call from you. Congratulations, inspiration for our crew. Signing off. Great comms. There you can see the side hatch is now officially open and some exciting <laughs> waves from the crew. Now they are putting on uh, some protection uh, along the hatch door uh, for while they egress the vehicle here. So we have members of the recovery team inside the, the capsule with the crew members. <laughs> um, they're doing some checkouts, uh, make sure everything is good before their crew can exit the capsule. But this is certainly very, very exciting. <laughs> Uh, again, that hatch has been closed and sealed for three days. This is the first time it's opened since we lifted off Wednesday, uh, September 15th. And we have some fist pumps from Jared. I'm sure the entire crew is super excited. <laughs> Could see them waving. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of excitement from the crew as they're getting ready to egress the Dragon spacecraft. It looks like they are uh, taking their tablets from each of the crew members in preparation for this egress. 
Now there is a procedure uh, that they will go through um, even now uh, as they egress the vehicle. It won't just be all of them getting out at once. Um, they will follow a procedure. I believe they will be starting with uh, egress of seat one. If you're just now joining us, you are tuned into the Inspiration4 all civilian mission to orbit with the Inspiration4 crew back home on Earth, getting ready to egress the Dragon vehicle here shortly. More, more exciting <laughs> fist bumps. <laughs> Such they a great are. shot. <laughs> How incredible. Some hearts. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Again, that was the crew members of Inspiration 4. As excited as ever, uh, they are back on Earth on the recovery vessel, just waiting to uh, exit the Dragon spacecraft. <laughs> Some fist bumps going around. <laughs> Again, as the crew does begin their egress, they will have a team that does uh, help them uh, as they egress or exit the vehicle. Um, as they have been out in microgravity for the last three days, uh, they have not felt the gravity of their own body in three days. Um, so this is a very standard procedure uh, to have some support and help as they egress the vehicle. Right now, it looks like they are removing the footrests at the bottom of their seats. This will give them some space as they exit. Yeah, that is a good thing to note that um, uh, when we land, we also uh, recline the seats back down to make it a little bit easier for the astronauts uh, and crew members to exit the vehicle. And it looks like we have our first crew member, Haley Arsenault, egressing the vehicle. She was sitting in seat one to the left. <laughs> she looks very excited, <laughs> even if we're just looking at the uh, backside of her SpaceX spacesuit helmet. <laughs> Officer Haley Arsenal has now egressed the vehicle, the first of the Inspiration4 crew, and so very excited. Lots of waves, thumbs Some up. Thumbs up. <laughs>
getting a little photo up. <laughs> and it looks like up next is Dr. Cyan Proctor. Yeah, this is very exciting for the crew to be uh, exiting the capsule and finishing their inspiration for mission, a mission that's done so much uh, for folks around the world. Yes, absolutely inspiring all the way around. Just an incredible mission with an incredible crew. And here comes Dr. Cyan Proctor. <laughs> there, there she is, excited as ever, Dr. Cyan Proctor. Oh, I love it. Love it. <laughs> Just strutting yeah, on down. I know, no problem at all. <laughs> Looks like mission specialist Chris Sembroski is up next to egress the vehicle. <laughs> Looks like some dancing there. <laughs> Again, there is crew there to help them egress to make sure that they do not damage um, their suits or themselves on their way out. And that is Chris Sembroski again, the mission specialist. <laughs> again, with a smile all over his face, super excited, <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Commander Jared Isaacman getting ready to egress the vehicle as well the final fourth Inspiration4 crew member of the first all-civilian crew mission to orbit. And what a way to close it out. He was really the, um, uh, the, the person with the vision. <laughs> there he is. Commander Jared Isaacman of the Inspiration4 crew. So excited. <laughs> Handshakes and hugs all Amazing. around. Amazing. Now they will be uh, doing a standard procedure, going into the medical room on the recovery vessel um, and doing some medical checks to make sure that the crew is safe and healthy. Um, and then they will hop on a helicopter and head back to Florida. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, now that Jared, Haley, Cyan, and Chris are safely uh, back home on Earth um, and getting checked out by our medical team, we're going to wrap up our live coverage of their historic return. Uh, we started this day about two hours ago. Uh, we had um, successful trunk separation. We completed a deorbit burn, closed the nose cone. Uh, we got through that blackout period of communications. Uh, both sets of chutes uh, deployed. Um, awesome and the crew splashed down we hoisted them up and they have just exited the vehicle next up they will catch a helicopter ride back to shore where they will be rejoined by their families so welcome back to the inspiration Four crew it has been an honor and a privilege to share their journey with all of you as we continue this new era in human spaceflight Yes, for updates, uh, check out our social media. Um, also, be sure to donate to St. Jude. There's a donation button if you're watching on YouTube on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, the Netflix documentary is coming out with its fifth and final episode here shortly as well, and that will conclude liftoff and splashdown return of the Inspiration4 mission. Again, thank you to everyone that has joined us so far, and thank you everyone for following along. Uh, we'll see you next time.